Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 1st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, we're going to talk about some forecast temperatures for the Arctic. I've been talking a lot about the Arctic over recent blogs, but it's an important area of the Northern Hemisphere to look at as the Northern Hemisphere transitions into winter because the impacts of human-caused climate change, in particular warming above baseline temperatures, tends to intensify as we get into fall and particularly into winter. Now this year, actually, let me back up a second. So primarily what tends to occur as we get into fall and winter, what seems to have been occurring a lot during recent years is you get a lot of heat transfer coming in from the various ocean zones. The ocean is, is a big heat sink and oceans tend to moderate temperatures seasonally. And so what happens is during winter time, the, the oceans relative to the continents tend to remain a, a bit warmer due to human forced climate change. And those warmer waters tend to transfer heat northward or toward the Arctic Ocean region more and more. At least that's what we've seen over recent years. In particularly in the North Atlantic, in the region of the Barents Sea, as well as in the Pacific Ocean region, particularly running in through the Bering and Chukchi Seas. This year, there are some features that are uh, ones that we want to look at. One is that the Pacific Ocean as a whole is much warmer than normal. There, there are very few regions of the Pacific Ocean right now that are cooler than normal. And most of the Pacific Ocean is, is, is very warm in general with sea sur surface temperatures ranging from just about negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. Um, be, well, below the, the baseline averages, these are climatological averages, 30 year averages to around 1.9 C or 2 C above average near the equatorial regions in the one to two degrees Celsius rate range. And near the Eastern equatorial Pacific starting to heat up in a, in a kind of an El Nino type signal where you tend to get a pulse of warming in the Eastern Pacific that, that moves west. And it does appear that we're starting to get into a trend toward El Nino at least according to some of the indicators. But as we get close to the pole, as we get close to the Arctic, sea surface temperatures south of the Aleutians are about three degrees Celsius above normal into the Bering Sea, also around three degrees Celsius above normal. And then getting into the Chukchi Sea, more than four degrees Celsius above normal. And these above normal temperatures are providing a push for the jet stream and enabling energy transfer into the Arctic during fall. So I just want to talk about that, that general context before we start talking about predicted trends. Now, a couple other points that I'd like to take a look at are uh, GFS model anomalies for the Northern Hemisphere are getting into the one degree Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 baseline range. So that's a very warm Northern Hemisphere range as we get into Northern Hemisphere fall. And it's worth noting that the models have tended to undershoot. So, so the predictions have tended to undershoot actual temperatures by just a hair. So, and this is important to look at as we look ahead because some of the models are showing a lot of warming on tap over the next five to seven days for the Arctic. So let's let's look at some of these models. The fir first model I'm gonna look at is the GFS model as provided or as reanalyzed by the Karsten Halstein website, which is a, a climate reanalysis website, which shows that by October 8th, so just a week from now, Arctic Ocean temperatures are expected to range about 4.3 degrees Celsius above typical temperatures, and the Arctic as a whole 
is also expected to range about 4.3 degrees Celsius above average. Now, these are very, very warm departures for this time of year. We usually don't see this, this level of departure until we get more so into November or December or January. These departures happening in the early to mid fall are a bit of a concern and something that we need to keep an eye on. Now, of course, at present, departures are more in the range of about two degrees Celsius above normal, which is still a pretty strong departure for this time of year. But if we start to get into these four degrees Celsius anomaly ranges, that, that's, that, that, that's indicative of a lot of energy transfer, a lot of heat transfer into the Arctic Ocean zone. And an indicator that, that polar amplification is really starting to ramp up early on. Now, I just want to drill down and look at some surface temperatures here, in, particularly in the Chukchi Sea, going to zoom in. And we're getting, at present, in the GFS model for the present hour, we're getting 54 degrees Fahrenheit readings or about 12 degrees Celsius readings over parts of the Chukchi Sea. And this is this is very warm conditions for this time of year. At this time of year, temperatures in this zone of the Arctic Ocean would tend to be much closer to freezing, if if not below freezing. So some some extraordinary temperature departures in the range of about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius above average. Um, over the coming days, this heat transfer into the Arctic is expected to continue. I'm just going to go ahead and advance this uh, GFS model so you can see the, the warmth from these exposed sea surface temperatures just continuing to cycle into the Chukchi and Beaufort Sea with, with temperatures remaining well above normal despite the what would be the seasonal pressure for, for cooling in this zone. This, Looking further north, near the 80 degree north latitude line, temperatures remain near the freezing point of seawater, which is around negative two degrees Celsius. So the freeze melt point is still exceeded in a lot of these zones and even running up into parts of the high Arctic as you get close to the 85 degree north latitude line through, through, one, through one zone. And also north of Svalbard, which has tended to be quite a bit warmer than normal. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the jet stream map. We did talk a, a lot about jet streams in the beginning, and I, we have some time, so I, I'd like to just show you what's going on at present with regards to the jet stream. And what we have is, is, is a very high amplitude wave running up through Alaska and over the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas. And what's expected to occur in the model, and this is quite an entanglement going on in the jet stream here at this time, is that an upper level high pressure system is expected to, to be cut off and to move over the central Arctic. So here you see the beginnings of the upper level high getting cut off with the, the polar jet moving a bit to the south and uh, almost complete cutoff by October 3rd with this impulse of warmer air just getting cycled into the Arctic and, and remaining there in the form of a, a cutoff high pressure cell over the central Arctic, which is helping to pull these warmer than normal temperatures into the Arctic at this time of year. You know, there's still some energy packet uh, transfer between the uh, polar jet and, and the Arctic as well, a bit of a uh, interaction between the jet and this upper level high that's that's predicted with a, the wave feature beginning to develop again by the fifth. So quite a lot of energy transfer moving into the Arctic from a much warmer than normal Pacific Ocean, in particular a much warmer than normal northern Pacific Ocean, which is feeding into a trend of observed polar amplification for the Arctic, which is a, a signature of human caused climate change and has of impacts on Northern Hemisphere weather during fall, winter, and spring. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.